European honeybees have important roles in agriculture and food production, so it's critical to understand the biology of bees and the factors that impact their health. Luckily, lots of research has been performed in this field in recent years, and we have learned much about these important insects. European honeybees are well adapted to live in a humanized world. With access to floral resources and gardens, they can even be successful in urban environments. However, domesticated bee populations in many parts of the world have declined in recent years, something you may have already heard about in the media. The cause of this decline is the subject of much entomological study, with researchers suggesting disease, climate, habitat loss, and pesticide use as contributing factors. One of the biggest challenges in beekeeping is preventing and treating the many parasites and diseases which European honeybee colonies are susceptible to. International transport and large-scale breeding of these bees increases the risk of transmission of pathogens and parasites between colonies. While there are a growing number of policies and action plans to help European honeybees and other pollinators, the dangers that face these insects are still present. In this lesson, we will discuss some of the challenges that managed European honeybee colonies face. A particularly bizarre condition that affects European honeybee colonies is colony collapse disorder, or CCD. CCD describes a rather mysterious phenomenon that occurs if the majority of worker bees in a colony abandon the hive. They leave behind the queen, immatures, a few nurse bees, and plenty of food. However, hives can't sustain themselves without a substantial worker bee population and eventually collapse as a result. The causes of CCD and even its existence are still topics of much research and debate. One potential cause is poor colony management, in which the bees are provided poor quality food reserves and inadequate parasite and disease control. This can result in the deterioration of queen bee health, which in turn affects colony health. Another potential cause of CCD is pesticide poisoning. However, this is unlikely as the bodies of poisoned bees have yet to be found near abandoned colonies. It is more likely that a combination of factors stimulates this unusual abandonment of a hive rather than a single cause. Interestingly, incidences of CCD are not uniform across the world. For example, CCD has not been found in Alberta, Canada, one of the most fruitful honey-producing regions in the world. Let's outline some common parasites and diseases that affect European honeybee colonies and which could potentially contribute to CCD. European honeybees have many arthropod parasites, including several species of insects in the orders Diptera, Lepidoptera, and Coleoptera. While these parasitic insects don't usually cause significant colony damage, several species of mites found in European honeybee hives can seriously impact the health of a colony. Varroa destructor is a parasitic mite that feeds from the outside on the fat body of both adult and larval bees. Female Varroa mites will enter a brood cell before it's capped and become sealed inside with the developing bee larva. This is where the female mites will reproduce. By the time the bee develops into an adult, the next generation of mites is mature and ready to search out other bees or larvae to parasitize. As these mites are external parasites, they can easily spread between colonies on drones or drifting workers, or when bees rob a smaller colony for honey stores. In addition to decreasing bee vitality, varroa mites transmit a host of diseases, such as the deformed wing virus. This virus causes bee wings and sometimes legs to develop improperly, which means the bee will not be able to fly and forage for food. This in turn reduces the fitness of the colony. Another type of parasitic mite that causes concern for beekeepers is Acarapus woodi, the honeybee tracheal mite. These mites spend most of their lives inside the tracheae of European honeybees, where they pierce the tracheal wall and feed on the bee's hemolymph. Only the female mites emerge from the honeybees to disperse, while males continue to feed until they die. Emerging females cling onto the bee's hairs and await contact with an uninfected bee. Feeding wounds made by the mites expose the tracheal surface to pathogens and affect the host's ability to breathe. Infection with tracheal mites reduces bee activity and shortens their lifespan. High infestations can also decrease foraging and honey production within a colony. 
Fortunately, honeybee tracheal mites are often controlled for, to some degree, when beekeepers treat for varroa mites. While parasites can impact the health of European honeybee colonies, microbial pathogens such as bacteria, viruses, and fungi are often even more harmful. The health of European honeybees is affected by several types of microbes, many of which can only be detected once infection has already occurred and symptoms are clearly visible. An example of a fungal disease found in European honeybee larvae is chalk brood disease. The fungus, Ascosfera apis, does not cause disease in adult bees, but can be carried by foraging adults who transmit the fungal spores to nurse bees and larvae. Bee larvae that have inadequate gut microflora to compete with the fungal spores are killed if they ingest them, and this can cause significant losses to colonies. Fortunately, this disease is usually short-lived, only occurring during the humid months of spring, and will clear up in the summer when humidity levels are not as high. Chalk brood disease has spread around the world due to human transport of managed European honeybee colonies. The fungal spores accumulate in the hive and associated products and can remain viable sources of infection for more than 15 years. Viruses can also cause disease in European honeybee colonies. As we discussed, varroa mites vector the deformed wing virus between bees. Infected bees usually have deformities and either die as pupae or die soon after a closing as adults. The severity of this disease is highly dependent on the presence of varroa mites within a bee colony. Symptoms in the bees are often more severe if mite infestation levels are high, however whether this is due to increased disease transmission or from compounding stressors is not yet fully understood. Bacterial pathogens can cause various types of diseases in European honeybees. For example, American fowl brood is a larval disease caused by the bacteria Panabacillus larvae. This bacterium is highly contagious and can kill entire colonies if left untreated. It can spread through virtually any medium that moves between bee colonies, from drifting workers to beekeeping equipment. Bee larvae are infected by the endospores of this bacterium when they ingest contaminated food. The spores germinate in the midgut of bee larvae and absorb essential nutrients from the host for development. It is believed that the bee larvae die from starvation caused by the infection. Spores produced by the bacteria are deposited on the walls of the brood cells when the infected larvae defecate or after dead larvae decompose. Unfortunately, these spores are extremely tolerant of environmental extremes and can remain infectious for more than 35 years. American fowl brood occurs around the world and causes substantial economic losses to beekeepers. There's currently no cure for the disease. Most treatments are preventative, such as sanitary practices and sometimes the use of antibiotics. American fowl brood is easily diagnosed and is strictly controlled by authorities because of its highly contagious nature. Here in Canada, any colonies suspected of American fowl brood infection must be immediately reported to a provincial bee inspector. Hives confirmed to be infected must be completely destroyed. Given the opportunity, bees collect a mixture of pollens from many different species of flowers. This provides them with the diversity of nutrients required to maintain a healthy colony. Unfortunately, modern farming practices have reduced the variety of flower species in many areas. The monocultures that dominate many agricultural landscapes may not provide the diversity of nutrients required to sustain a bee colony. Modern agriculture is also heavily reliant on insecticides. Nectar and pollen contaminated with these chemicals can have detrimental or lethal effects on bee colonies and may also contribute to bee decline. You may recall that neonicotinoids are a class of insecticides that have been implicated in the decline of bee health. Finally, beekeepers must be cautious as they can inadvertently harm bee colonies when they harvest honey. If beekeepers don't provide sufficient or timely carbohydrate sources after they harvest honey, starvation can cause significant bee mortality over the winter months. Nutritional stress may be enhanced by the presence of parasites in the colony and further increase the chances of infection. Decreases in European honeybee populations from diseases and insufficient nutrition can reduce yields of bee products and also cause huge economic losses due to reduced pollination. However, there are multiple tactics that we can employ to keep bee populations abundant and healthy. 
One way we can help bees is to provide them with the resources they need for survival. Beehives should be positioned close to a diversity of flowers so that the bees only have to travel a short distance to reach a variety of nectar sources. Potential bee habitat should also be maintained to increase the number of native pollinators in the area. For instance, untilled ground, unmown fence lines, and hedgerows in agricultural settings can be important habitats for native pollinators. We can limit insecticide use to reduce honeybee exposure to insecticides, or endeavor to spray insecticides in the evenings or when the crop is not in bloom to minimize the exposure of bees to the toxic chemicals. We can also use species-targeted formulations that reduce insecticidal impacts on non-pest species. Honeybees around the world have faced significant challenges in recent years. Parasites, pathogens, toxic chemicals, and nutritional risks are all factors that contribute to bee decline. Now that you have a better comprehension of the challenges faced by honeybees and their importance in world ecosystems and economies, we hope that you may have a new appreciation for the need to conserve these incredible insects.